So this is a scooter battery. This is from a nine bot scooter. Uh, I think they're owned by Segway now, but you know it's your standard scooter that you uh, you know you rent in cities and some people you know toss them over bridges and into San Francisco Bay things like that. Uh, well, I got some batteries. These are used. Uh, I got you know. <clears throat> a few of them and they're used and they no longer will take a charge with the charger so I was able to get these at a pretty pretty good price honestly uh, considering what these are they hold 20 18650 cells that are I believe 2600 milliamp hour they're pretty uh, pretty standard um, 18650 cells you know they're they're good quality uh, but because they don't charge they have dumped them as a, as a surplus and uh, well I got I got some of them what I want to do today is show you how to take these apart and how to fix them so that they will accept charge again and they're perfectly useful because I'm clever like that. Well, I was going to uh, try and shoot this with a, a lull in the fan noise from the power supply, but uh, I guess that's not going to happen. Uh, I've got a power supply set up right now that is charging one of these, but I wanted to show you quick. Uh, this is the 9 baht scooter battery. It is, uh, I don't know if you can see the number there. 5,200 milliamp hours, 187 watt hours, 36 volts nominal. Uh, this is a 20 cell pack. So it's got 20 18650 cells in a 2P10S configuration. That means that it's got two in parallel and 10 in series. Total of 20 comes out to uh, 36 volts nominal, 37 volts nominal. Uh, 42 volts at top charge. This end has the two connectors. One is this four pin JST connector. This one goes to the charge port of the scooter. Uh, four wires, a red, black, yellow, and white. The red and black leads go to the charging system so that it can be trickle charged. Uh, this is the main power for the scooter and this is a pretty standard XT30 connector. Uh, this plugs into the main drive board of the scooter. When this blue LED is on and it is fully charged, uh, this battery should have 42 volts on this connector. So this connector should be live. And I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, 41.4. Now this one, which I have not recovered yet, if we go to the connector, yeah, you can tell that this is right now reading 2.6 volts, and that's not, I think that's just noise. Uh, there might actually be 2.6 volts on here, but that's about it. Uh, that's because this has reached a point of discharge, and the battery management system, which is on a board in here, has cut off power so that it should not be draining. Now I don't know why that's showing two and a half volts, but this is on something that's got no load. So if I actually if I go to a low impedance and try it. Yeah, if I go to a low impedance measurement, there's nothing on there. So these are the, some of the tools that I found uh, pretty essential in taking these apart. Uh, this is, it's a number one Phillips bit. Uh, I'm actually using this with the driver, but uh, you don't have to. I was able to take some of these apart with just the regular screwdriver. A flat bladed screwdriver, a small one to help pry it apart. I got a knife to help dig out some of this uh, silicone goo that is in here covering the screws. 
When you look on the mounting side, there are these mounting holes that are in here that are how this sits in the handle of the scooter. And then there are these little depressions that are in here. These are the place where there are these hidden screws. And you don't need to scoop this stuff out. It's a it's a silicone, it's like a, a regular silicone RTV that's just kind of dripped in here. It's pretty soft. This gets messy, um, but I have found it easier to pull these, to take these out first to gain access to the tops of the screws. You can also use the flat bladed screwdriver to pry it out. Uh, that can sometimes work better. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to switch to this now. This black stuff gets all over. <laughs> okay, now that those are done, I'm going to pull them out. You don't want to put too much downward pressure. These are not, these are not really, um, they are very tiny screws. They're just going into plastic. They are not in there very hard, so it's pretty easy to take them out. If you apply too much downward pressure, you end up melting the plastic that holds them in. Oops. And that just gets more difficult to take them out. When you are done with this section, you should have eight of these screws out. If you don't have eight, keep looking. All right, on the top side, there are four hidden screws. They're underneath this silicone here. And they're pretty much in what I call the four corners. If you notice, there's a flat side and they're there, there, down here, and here. These are a little bit more difficult to get to, which is why I like taking the razor knife in here and trying to clear out as much of the silicone as possible. These screws are a little bit longer than the other ones, and they also have round heads as opposed to the uh, flat heads of the uh, of the ones that hold the batteries together. And you see, like I said, this gets messy. This stuff is just difficult and gets everywhere. Once all the screws are out, the easiest thing to do I found is there's a, there's a slot here on either side, and I like to take the flat blade screwdriver put it in here and pry apart the halves. They come apart really easily. There are tabs along the side that go all the way down. And there you go. Now I do think these are very nicely designed. They're very modular. Uh, each one of these four battery sections has tabs on here that are spot welded. You can pull these up and separate these out into these four battery chunks. So for instance, if you have a bad cell in one of these, you can just remove the tabs, take out that cell and replace it with another one and have a fully working set. That comes in kind of important because these batteries have been below their minimum charge for an indeterminate amount of time. And when that happens, the batteries can be damaged. Uh, they can start growing uh, crystal tendrils that will discharge them over time. So it can reduce their lifespan, increase heat. It's just a really nice way to be able to handle that. I do like these, the way that this is put together. 
Now there's also a two board battery management system up here. There's a top board. I can pull this off here. This top board deals primarily with the um, balancing and the brains of the system. If I can get this apart, there we go. Uh, it's a cute little board. I have not gone into this in any detail yet. I have not gone through into decoding what the various parts are, but it's a complex little board. This does handle the battery balancing. This will make sure that the cells charge up evenly when you're charging them. This board is the one that is the battery protection board. This is the one that turns it off, turns it on, uh, makes sure that it's the power is getting to the scooter as necessary. To be fair, you don't need to take these boards off. I just took them off to show you what it what it's like, but I'm going to put these back on to uh, well, I think I'm going to put it back on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put this back on to uh, show you that you don't need to take it apart. You can work with it just fine. Uh, I did run into one of these where the connection was not very good, so jiggling board around was able to make it work. Now these two on the top are the the maximum voltage. This is the output of the entire battery pack. And these tabs are welded on. What I'm doing is I'm lifting these. I'm not breaking the welds. I'm just lifting them off so that I have something to grab onto with the clips. Yeah, I like that one's not very good. This one's a little bit better. Now I also want to point out, if you notice here, there is the red, the positive lead, the black, the negative lead. This corresponds to this side. This corresponds to this side. So this is the positive terminal of the battery. This is the negative terminal. You can always go by these colors. Also on the top, there is a switch right here, a little push button switch. This is the reset switch. Um, if you take this plastic piece off, it's just a little easier to get to. Uh, you don't need to take it off. You can get in there with a flat blade screwdriver. But once this battery gets charged up, when you hit this button, that will reset the battery management system and make it so that it's live again. Before I go any farther, I wanted to show you something. Now, some of these packs, I mean, this is an assortment of packs. I, I don't know the provenance of them, but on a pack that should be somewhere in the 30 to 40 some volt range. Uh, this one is reading just over five volts <laughs> on the entire pack. That's pretty dead. So I don't know if this one is going to be recoverable or not, but we will give it a shot. Normally these are coming in, you know, 20, 20 to 30 volts and just sitting as is. This is the, this is by far the worst one I've seen. All right, here's one that is fully charged. You can see that the LED is not on. I'm going to go in here and reset by clicking this little button. Uh, so... You can see this. And there you go. The LED is on. This is now a fully live battery pack. I don't know how long it's going to hold the charge, but uh, I guess we're going to see. I've been putting these back together without the screws. Uh, easiest way to do this that I found, or the, the best way, is to put it together so that the screw holes that correspond to the bottom of the mounting, or what I'm calling the bottom, go and then match the bottom side. There 
and press fit the whole thing together. I have not been putting the screws back in because I want to be able to take these apart and test individual cells after some time. But this at least keeps them, you know, isolated and not likely to be sparking anywhere or, you know, conducting electricity in ways that they shouldn't be conducting electricity. You know. Now, because this is so tremendously though, I have the power supply set up to uh, 42 volts for a full charge, maximum of five amps current. And um, there's going to be a little spark once I connect these together, but just to do this, there we go, a little spark. And we can see the charge starting to pack right up. So this one we're going to just let sit and charge for a good period of time. And hopefully it'll hold the charge. I guess we'll find out in the long run. The charging will go up over 200 watts. Um, that's about the highest that it goes right now, at least at this setting, which is plenty. I mean, this is this is charging at 1C for these battery packs, so I'm not overly concerned. They get a little tiny bit warm, but not too bad. All right, just a quick in. It is the next day. Uh, I have this back together, although it's not together quite right. I have this one marked as questionable because uh, this is the one that was the lowest voltage, but you can see the blue light. It's still good. So um, I have more of these that I've, I've done. Uh, I can only do a couple a day just because I don't have a ton of time, but so far they are all holding charge. So I'm going to go with it, and uh, hopefully I should be able to recover most, if not all, of these packs. And then I can do some other fun stuff. All right, see you guys.